Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Tuesday. I'm Gigi. I'm on the track. Oh, a beautiful morning. June is here and it feels like June. It looks like June. The sun is out. Sometimes the sun goes in and out a little bit. Clouds kind of covering a little bit. But it is an awesome morning. It's going to be in the 80s here in the 757 today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. All right. You know, we know there's a lot of Hebrew names for God. Now, there's one that you don't see a lot or you don't hear a lot. We know God has many names because he is the I Am. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's our healer. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's our peace. We're going to be talking about peace tonight. He's El Shaddai. He's uh, uh, Sitkanu and all of those names. But there is one that you rarely hear. And that's Elkanah. E-L-K-A-N-N-A. -N -N and that stands for the jealous God. He's a jealous God. The verse that I'm coming from today is Exodus 25 and 6. And it says, you shall not bow down to them. That means the graven images or to other gods of Luji, Or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Punishing the children for the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. But, I like the but, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Oh my goodness, because I'm thinking about that last part. Uh, another word says, if you love me, You'll keep my commandments. But the part I want to dwell on this morning, and you know, this verse was in our daily bread, and my, my gym nugget has nothing to do with the story in our daily bread, but the verse that they used, uh, the text, was the thing that stood out to me. And my gym nugget for today is, God is a jealous husband. <laughs> God is a jealous husband. You know, uh, one time I heard a preacher preach about this. He said, you know what? God had to send his son, Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ was that loving and merciful part of himself. But God is like a jealous husband. And he told this story. He said, God is like a husband that has been out working all day and taking care of his family. And he comes home and he finds his wife in the bed with another man. And because of God's jealousy, he, in today's time, might would pull out a gun, and I don't condone violence, but... He is such a jealous God. He's the part that would pull out the gun and start shooting up in there because of his jealousy. When he starts to think about how good he has been to his wife, the church, and this wife has the nerve to be with somebody else and worship somebody else. You know, that was a powerful illustration because God is Elkanah. He is a jealous God. See, uh, these were, uh, Exodus 20 was starting the Ten Commandments and first commandment was uh, to have no other God before and not to bow down to any graven um, images. And today he is jealous and sometimes we're wondering why 
these things are happening because God is a jealous God. Those of us that should be putting him first, we're putting other things in front of God. And he's jealous. He's just like that jealous husband. And and I'm not I'm not um, saying nothing wrong because it says because he is jealous, he punishes the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generations of those who hate him. Because if you're not putting him first, you're not really loving him like you should. And he says to those that hate me, but the good news, but showing, but showing love, showing his blessing, showing love to the thousands of generations of those who love me. And this is the part, keep my commandments. As I said in the beginning, you got to love the Lord. That's why I said love the Lord with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. Put him first. And how do he know that you love him? You keep his commandments. You do what his law says. You don't have anything. Uh, you don't give more allegiance to anybody or love than God. That means your husband, your wife, your children, your job, your education, your sorority, your fraternity. You know, some people give more allegiance to their sororities and fraternities than they do to God. Oh, my God. But he says, I'm a jealous God. And he acts on his jealousy. Says it right here. But for those that love him and put him first, oh, my gosh, he shows love. He shows grace. He shows mercy. He even pours out blessings to the thousands of generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. Oh, my goodness. I don't want to make God jealous. <laughs> I don't want to make God jealous. As much as I love my husband of almost 41 years, I love God more than anything or anyone. That's why I'm going to keep his commandments. Amen. Like the Incredible Hulk. The Incredible Hulk said, you don't want to see me when I get mad. You don't want to see me when I get mad. So I'm not going to make him jealous. You know, just like my husband. You know, my husband, he, I, you know, I'm going to tell you, he's never did anything in violence against me in the whole 40 years. And I don't want it to start. You know, he's mild-mannered. But I don't know how he would be if he walked in and I'm with somebody else. Come on now. And my husband... Just drop my paper here. And my husband is a uh, marksman <laughs> with a gun. Oh, Lord, I mercy. But anyway, we should be more afraid of a jealous God. A jealous God. <laughs> Come on now. But anyway, I just want to let you know that God is a jealous husband. Elkanah. Elkanah. Oh, my God. Oh, tonight, tonight. Join me for Church School Live. We have uh, another wonderful lesson. We're in this quarter of uh, the righteous reign of God. Uh, we start these series of lessons. And tonight, the lesson is God's kingdom of peace. Now, when you hear that, you might say, oh, well, we know it's going to be peace in the sweet by and by and when we get to heaven and you know the scriptures like revelation talks about a new heaven and a new earth and the lion is going to lie down with the lamb and all that type of stuff but he's intending for us to have a kingdom of peace here now you know we're going to look at this lesson from isaiah because um it's like in three dimensions because he was talking about what would happen after the um, children of Israel were released from the uh, Babylonian captivity. Um, also, uh, Jesus comes in the New Testament because if Jesus didn't intend for us to live in a kingdom of peace now, he wouldn't have said in Matthew, blessed are the peacemakers, 
for they shall be called the children of God. Oh, we're going to go into that thing tonight. God's kingdom of peace. He intends for us to live in peace. Not that stuff around us is going to be peaceful, but we can live peaceful now, right here on earth. I ain't going to give too much more away, but it's a very good lesson. So join me tonight. Don't forget to subscribe to the Gym Nugget so you don't miss nothing, nothing, <laughs> amen, especially the Word of God. As I teach from the International Sunday School Lesson Series, Oh, I love these lessons. I love these lessons. And you know, you got to keep up. You got to get your regular um, dose, your regular meal, your daily meal, and your consistent meal of the Word. So join me tonight for Church School Live on the Gym Nugget channel and Facebook Live. I'm just so excited. But don't forget, don't forget, oh my God. God is a jealous husband. He's a jealous husband. And you don't want to make him jealous. Oh, my goodness. See you tonight, y'all. Bye.